Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out Captain of Industries. This is going to be a mini Let's Play series, so let me know if you're enjoying it. The beginning start to the game can be quite deadly, so if you want me to do a little tutorial on getting started in Captain of Industries, then let me know in the comment section below and perhaps we'll do that. But to get started, what we're going to be doing today is hopefully get to copper because copper is what allows us to uh, create the resources that we need for the maintenance of our vehicles, which without that, the vehicles are going to start breaking straight away. Uh, but the problem is that's not the only thing that we need to worry about. We need to worry about the fuel. We need to worry about the food for all of our settlements. There are so many little cogs to this game that it makes it a little bit overwhelming at first, but hopefully we'll be able to get this up and running in next to no time. Right, first things first, I'm going to just skip the tutorials and we're going to have a look at the research tab. So if we go to here, this is the research tree. We have like a ridiculous amount of stuff. Do we have large vehicles, upgraded fuel stations, electrolysis, cargo depots, ship engines, ship weapons, rockets. Okay, this could get rather interesting. Anyway, let's start by claiming all of this and also getting some of this wood on the go as well. I'm also going to build a second research lab because we really, really, really want to be unlocking it's almost like a race we want to be unlocking the copper refinement as soon as possible so i'm going to get started and once we've got a, a little bit going we'll uh, come back to it we now have our wood being chopped down so i'm going to start harvesting this first thing that we need to do is grab ourselves uh, this little kiln it's, not, it's a coal maker actually and we're also going to grab a blast furnace. Now, one thing that this game has uh, that's a little bit different compared to other factory games is the sheer amount of secondary items, can't think of the word, that we have to deal with. So, for example, here we have to deal with the exhaust and also remove the coal, which will be placed into the blast furnace. So we're going to have to use the chimney stacks for both of these outputs. Like so. Currently, everything that we do has to be transported via vehicle, except when it comes to the molten uh, channel, which is going to take all of our iron, molten iron, to where it needs to be casted. Another thing that I actually really like about this game, with it coming to Ali Access, is that we have the ability to, as you can see, use tools like the cut function or we can actually if we want press c and then drag and this gives us a blueprint system as well which is really cool but we're not going to worry about that just yet eventually further down the line we will also be able to use conveyors but until we unlock it we're stuck with what we have here we also have pipes as well for liquids uh, but for now we're just going to let these build Next, I'm going to need to place down this farm to feed our uh, populace, which you can find in this little settlement of cargo containers. And you can actually upgrade these later on to be more like proper houses. Uh, but this is our settlement. And eventually, once we've repaired our ship, which is how we got here, currently it's damaged, we will be able to go to the map and explore this area. And it will unlock more areas for us to explore, um, as well as pirates. Which I'm interested to see what they've uh, done with since the alpha. We're actually flying through the research at the moment, which is great. We've uh, already done construction and also farming. We're now doing vehicles and mining, which will allow us to mine out these areas for their, uh, their raw resources, whether that's coal, I think if we open this. Yeah, you can see we've got oil over here. We've got, I think this is limestone. Yeah, we have sand, copper, more coal, gold over here, and iron, and there's some more iron here, as, as well as sand, of course, and groundwater, which I don't know if groundwater helps with the farms, but certainly when you have ground pumps, they'll, they'll become useful. All right, so we've now unlocked assembly. Now, assembly is quite important for us because... If we place this here, 
we can actually choose which recipe we want to uh, start building. Now we can start building construction parts, which we're going to need for continuing the building of our items. Uh, but we can also look at other items as well, such as mechanical parts, which we're also going to need to start producing at some point soon as well. And while we're waiting for that to build, we can also look at mine control towers. Uh, we're going to need some coal, so we might as well... Actually, we can build the mine control tower, mine out the coal, and then we won't need to use this uh, coal maker. So that's probably the best next step for us. So temporarily, what I'm going to do is just turn off the coal maker. That will mean that the wood is being sent to here instead so that we can be producing these construction parts. Having storage, uh, unit storage would be really useful, but we do also need to think about getting more population and we can do that with the beacon. And after that, we're going to have to look also at basic diesel production, which is also going to give us wastewater to deal with, which means that we will probably have to dump it in the sea unless we can find a way to like dump it into a hole, I guess. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. So this is our mine tower. The mine tower is actually really useful because it allows us to select areas to be um, to be mined. So if we grab one of these vehicles, we're also going to need to build a small excavator to start off with. And then from here, we can also choose the mining designation. Um, to start off, I would like to keep it just flat and we can dig it out later. So we're just going to set that so that anything in this uh, section is going to be mined. And then we're also going to need to select a dumping designation as well. Now this can be really useful if we want to gain access to the higher levels. For example, this upper uh, plateau or this one here. So in order to do that, all we're going to do is drag that down and it will hopefully allow our vehicles to just drop off the resources. When it comes to farming, we do have uh, fertility on the, the soil and how fertile the soil is, is dependent on how much resource, um, how many potatoes in this case we actually produce. And what we can do if we wanted to was pause the production in this farm and you'll notice that the fertility actually increases so if we had two farms we could kind of crop rotate which is also available later on in the game a really nice thing about this game is that the terrain is um moldable like you can see this digging away and at this and you can actually dig deep down into the ground as well now because we're producing coal we don't actually need to use this anymore so we're going to keep it on pause and we can see that we, we're full on construction parts so what we really do need right now is some kind of storage so that's the next thing that we're going to be researching over here saying that we have a slight issue which i totally forgot about my people are living in their own filth look we've got settlements are full of trash so uh, in that case we're going to have to go to the little re not the recycle tab i do wish it was a little bit easier to set how's it this is the one to work out what's needed where we're going to place down a, a waste collection here and then they'll probably dump the waste we're going to build a ramp out of waste at this rate we're also going to need a beacon for bringing in new people. We'll need to build a maintenance depot, which we might as well do over here, somewhere that's relatively central. And here you can see they've already started making the ramp out of waste. Now this particular um, building does need power and so does this beacon. So before we get started with the oil pumps in the distillery, we're actually going to need to build a small diesel power generator. And obviously that's going to start using our 
diesel up. So for that, we're going to have to get the production on the go. Let's put down some oil pumps. Now these resources will run out. That is one thing that we have to bear in mind. But for now, this should keep us going at least for a little while. We are in need of coal in order to run this, which is why having this up and running is fantastic. And from here, we're going to need to go to transports and connect this up like so. The other thing that we need to worry about is the waste output. So we can run this all along here where we can then grab a liquid dump and tip it all back into the ocean. <laughs> How eco-friendly of us. And hopefully that is all good for us. Ah, would you look at that. I love all of the little animations for each of the build pieces in this game. I've also noticed that we have a bit of a problem. I have left the refugee um, beacon on this whole time. And so we have an influx, not enough housing. Settlement is overcrowded. So while we're here, let's very quickly build another house. Oh, lovely. Look at all of that wastewater. Just, just vomiting that out back into the ocean. No one will mind. With all of our diesel now being produced, we can actually look at sorting out concrete. Now, in order to create the concrete, we're going to have to potentially get some slag and crush it, which can only be done by processing ores. So that's the other thing that we need to do, some copper. And oh, we're going to have to do this as well, rotary kiln. We're going to need coal and limestone. So we need to get a limestone mine on the go here. Really, we need to start chopping through here. Put it here. And then we'll start digging out this area and taking that coal along with the limestone to create uh, cement. Yeah, sounds good to me. We've unlocked copper refinement, which is going to be really useful in a moment, and also synthetic rubber. Uh, but for now, we are getting limestone um, over to here to be broken down with coal to create cement. We have the exhaust already up and running. And then from there, it's going to move it into this concrete mixer. And we're going to have to produce slag crushed next. And we also have water here, which we're going to need to. Oh, look, that's perfect. Run into there, but via water storage. And the reason why we're doing that is because this can only hold so much when it rains. So by having storage, we'll be able to buffer the water and hopefully get more water in from the rain rather than it just fully saturating up. We're now looking at doing some copper refinement here and we're going to use the copper ore with the coal. This is going to add slag for us to deal with, which also means we're going to have to worry about this. The slag is going to have to somehow get up here which we can't do yet because we haven't got a slag chute or conveyor, which is up here. Oh, that's so annoying. And the idea is that the slag will go up to the crusher. The crusher will bring this around into the cement mixer, and this will take the uh, cement into the, sorry, concrete mixer. But we also now need to deal with <laughs> Copper. It's like a never ending spire. So with copper refinement, we actually have to have the metal caster and then the copper electrolysis. So it makes it a little bit more complicated than just iron production. It'd probably be best for us to place that maybe here, then another one here, and then the electrolysis. Hopefully, with a little bit of luck, work here. I'm going to belt this up and uh, hopefully get the rest of this 
research done, and then we'll see how it's going. Well, we unlocked transports, uh, the conveyors. Unfortunately, I hadn't realized that we need uh, this construction parts part two in order to, well, build the conveyors. So that is the next thing that we need to do. In order to do that, we are going to need to build an electric assembly. So we'll place that over here. Back this side, make sure that it's in line. And then hopefully we'll be able to just get at least a few of these on the go because we have set up electronics over here. So this is taking rubber, which is full from over this little section here. And from here, it's being um, combined with this copper plating to produce the electronics. So we are producing electronics and we are producing the necessary construction parts in order for us to create the construction parts part two. Oh no, we need construction parts two in order to produce. Can we do them with the, oh, we can with the um, manual one. That's a relief. Okay, let's destroy this. For a second then I thought I'd ruined it all. Now this is taking quite a while for us to get the necessary resources. You can see we're still on zero. We're consuming faster than we're producing. Uh, one thing that we can do though is we can actually use our Unity at the cost of 0.25 a month. You can see that we have a surplus of 1.45 a month at the moment in order to double up the production. So we are definitely going to do that right now. Also, I'm very happy to see that despite having a running concrete mixer and the electrolysis machine, that we've actually got plenty of water. Uh, I was a bit worried that the rain wouldn't provide enough for us. We're doing all right. But the next thing that we need to do is get the shipyard repaired. Oh, that doesn't cost much. It's only oh, 75. Yeah, we, we need more. <laughs> so we have done it. The ship is ready so we can crew uh, we can load the crew now, actually. Let's do that. And that will allow us to go out and explore. Um, I don't really want to do that just yet. I think we'll do that in the next episode, but I'll show you what I've just finished over here. So all of this is running. It's uh, all automated. We've done the same here. I've also built a little uh, fuel station here so that it comes directly from our diesel. And uh, yeah, everything is slowly coming along, including uh, <laughs> could this be? uh, ramp of trash, the great ramp of trash. But guys, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up and let me know in the comments section below if you want to see more Captain of Industry. But we are going to leave it there. Special thanks does go to our amazing supporters, most notably our solo Eclipse patrons, the Calamity Cerebral Tag of James Irwin and Fireflesh, as well as our Lunas, Dixie Chris, Lord of Delight and Ben as well as our blood moon of the day, which today is Papa Snoozy. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.